Hi, welcome to the bathtub, where when you hear this theme song, you know we're into one of our uh, our new theme shows here at the bathtub, which is the Mary, uh, it's called uh, Short Story Roundabout. Short Story Roundabout, which is basically where just I'm just reading different short story collections, usually mixing them up. Dodo's been a huge pain in the ass lately. And this is also, Dodo, shh, shh. Come here, come here and be quiet. Come on. Come here. Show everybody how smart you are. Come here. Come. Come. Dodo. Come. Are you in the cage? No. She goes in the cage and then starts screaming. And then you have to go get her out. Hold on a second. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Shush, shush, shush. Too much noise. Come on. She has to be escorted. She won't. She, she doesn't just come when you call her. She calls you to make her. We're supposed to go get her. That's basically how it works. Here you go, my children. This is a. Uh, this is uh so this is the it's the post tech edition it's the post carb edition no carbs are being harmed in any of these these episodes and it's the post morris surgery now you can you can't really see it i have a little morris surgery down on my nose right in the in there and i'm really i i've usually tried to keep my word to to our bathing buddies and i promised several people that i was going to show you the stitches and i had the stitches that taken out yesterday so so that's so I broke my I broke my word. Anyway, everything was fine. It wasn't anything serious. People in California, we, we do those things like going, getting our hair cut, getting more surgery, is like getting a haircut in California. Um, and that's a long way of saying that uh, we're going to talk about some short stories. I've had a lot of work to do lately, so I've been kind of just kind of indulging myself with stories. Sometimes they're kind of crossing over with some of the work I'm doing. As we talked about last week, I was about halfway through, the Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. The first two short uh, collections of stories of the Holmes books are just great. I read these as a kid and I reread them and I'm rereading it now at 67 years old. I love this. I read the whole volume. I just finished um, the last story, The Adventure of the Copper Beaches. And there's so many of these stories I remember so vividly. He's just such a good storyteller. And the way he sets up the story and the last story in the book, they're all really good. Um, that we talked about the Speckled Band, which is one of the great all-time stories, and uh, but the last one I loved a lot, the Copper Beaches, which is basically Sherlock Holmes goes out to the countryside, and there's some weird guy, some couple who've hired a woman to to come to their house to be a teacher for their horrible child. They have some horrible child in the house, and they make her do all sorts of weird things, and I won't describe it more than that. But just when they set it up, you know, they, he sets up the story so well. And then he makes it, he brings Sherlock Holmes to the rescue, and he usually solves things. And the stories are perfect bathtub readings. So if you haven't read, in a, read uh, the Sherlock Holmes stories in a while, the first one, Adventures, and I think the second one is Memoirs, which is when Moriarty shows up. You can't do you can't do wrong. I wanted to read one little passage, because it's kind of funny. There's a scene in it where, you know, in American crime, the cities are the sign of, are the place where all the terrors go on. And a lot of 19th century Victorian books and novels, the bad guys are all kind of urban, kind of urban monsters, Dr. Hyde types. But for Sherlock Holmes, the countryside is the place of horror. <laughs> it was a very funny passage. He says, uh, um, he, he says the old, the, out, the countryside for Sherlock Holmes, he says, always filled me with a certain horror. The reason is very obvious. The pressure of public opinion can do in the town what the law cannot ap- accomplish. There is no lane so vile that the scream of a tortured child or the thud of a drunkard's blow does not beget sympathy and indignation among the neighbors. And then the whole machinery of justice is ever so close that a word of complaint can set it going, and there is but a step between the crime and the dock. But look at these lonely houses, each in its own fields, filled for the most part with poor, ignorant folk who know little of the law. Think of the deeds of hellish cruelty, the hidden wickedness which may go on year in, year out in such places, and none the wiser. So the argument is that when people live close together, they kind of keep an eye on each other. But when they can live isolated in the countryside, which is supposed to be the haven for for the British middle class, Holmes hates that that area. Anyway, wonderful book. I also read two other books. Now, I'm going to do another longer piece about uh, Agatha Christie fairly soon. Oh, Ryan and I have kind of mixed, I'm probably most of our bathing buddies have mixed feelings, but it's kind of hard not to sometimes like Christie when you're in the right mood. And I read, because uh, I wanted to compare some of these detective stories, The Labors of Hercules, 
which is a short story collection, but it's written around a kind of theme. So I forget how many how many labors are are there of Hercules. There's twelve, twelve labors of Hercules, and Hercule Poirot is her her funny foreigner, as the detective. You know, got the mustaches and all that stuff. And I've never I've never I found I find Hercule Poirot kind of boring. Yeah, I've never found it very interesting. But this book is pretty clever. And it pretty, kind of does what, what uh, Christy does so well, which is each story has a clever little contraption that just kind of works. And every single thing in the stories tie up really tightly at the end. I mean, there's, there's one, for example, where there's, a two, there's often two or three things introduced at the beginning of the story, and they all kind of, it's kind of satisfyingly resolve themselves, much more so than in some of her novels, which I find the conclusions are just so hard to follow. I, just, I can't, I stop reading. By the time I find out who killed Roger Ackroyd, I just stop caring. But uh, these are really fun, and they're not all murder stories. There's one, for example, where a schoolgirl goes missing on a train, and someone steals a famous painting from a from a museum. And Poirot comes in for 15, 20 pages, and he solves it, and it all kind of ties together really nicely. And it and I'm a little I tend to be surprised almost every one of these stories. I'm not entirely sure what's going on. And she, and, she, and she sort of fools me, and I feel sort of satisfied. If you like Christie, or if you don't like Christie, this might be an interesting short story collection to try. I quite liked it. The Labors of Hercules was probably a, a Hercule. Well, it should be Hercule. And each of the stories is tied around one of the, is, has some sort of a metaphoric connection to um, to uh, the Labors of Hercules. For example, there's a uh, who's the the Hydra headed thing. The one that keeps get growing heads in the monster. It's that story is all about. It's a political story about gossip and how gossip multiplies. They're pretty clever little stories. I like them a lot. Finally, I've never read these before. I think there are people out there who probably love the Father Brown stories. G.K. Chesterton. I'm not a big G.K. Chesterton fan. I've liked what I've read. I like his criticism and his stuff about Dickens. The books he wrote about Dickens. Never read much of him. When I do read him, he's an incredibly smart prose writer, really interesting writer of prose, and, and has some beautiful sentences, and has always got a kind of a real intelligence working. And this, I wanted to read this because I've never read them, the Father Brown stories. I think there's a TV series, which I haven't watched, which turns Father Brown into a conventional Agatha Christie-type detective, you know, every week somebody gets murdered. But these are not at all typical detective stories. They tend. They, what's interesting about Chesterton in these stories is he tends to set up each story differently, and and Father Brown is very often just a minor character wandering around in the background. Um, for example, in the first story, he's 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 involved with some man and they get off a train, and something's been stolen, and the local detective follows these two strange priests through. I think it's Paris or somewhere. And he follows them around, and they keep leaving weird signals. And by the time you get to the end of the story, you realize that Father Brown has, tried to, has solved a crime, and he's leading the police to catch this guy. I shouldn't have told you that whole story. But each story has a kind of constru construction to it that's unusual. One starts off as a woman telling a story of her, her, her youth and two men, two men that she, she, who, who wanted to marry her. And as that story develops, we start to see that Father Brown is kind of coming around from the background. He's kind of just wandering through many of these stories. Occasionally shows up. And there's some pretty ghoulish stories. There's a, a couple of stories with heads being chopped off. And they always are different. They're always a bit surprising. So I would, I would, re I would recommend these if you like, uh, if you haven't read them. Uh, there's one little paragraph I thought I'd read because it's sort of, it's uh, Father Brown's explanation of why he is good to solve crimes. He says... Has it never struck you that a man who does next to nothing but hear men's real sins is not likely to be wholly unaware of human evil? <laughs> so so a very good Catholic like Chesterton, or who was a very devout Catholic, I think, um, it writes a story with in which the, the Catholic priest isn't a fool, but he's a bit foolish. And it, it's a fun fun series of stories, really well written. I'm, I think I'm, I, I keep kind of debating whether I'm going to keep reading it, but I think I will finish this first volume. This is the very first volume of the series called The Innocence of Father Brown. Anyway, that's a short story merry-go-round this week. There's the Morris surgery scar. You can barely see it. I'm, I'm, as, I'm as handsome as ever. And uh, 
We'll we'll talk to you soon. I'm gonna do one more of these. Oh, this new haircut. New haircut. Bye.